what have we here? Yes, it very much looks as though we have a 1949 split-nose Land Rover differential unit. The 4.7 ratio, if I'm not very much mistaken, and oh dear me, it's in a terrible state. But those nice chaps at www.xs4x4.com are going to strip it into lots of little pieces and then cleverly put it all back together so it's dashed dandy fine and like new. Oh, and I do believe that Nige chap is going to do one of those cinematic production thingies for us all to watch. Jolly exciting! Okay then, Land Rover Anoraks, put your Anorak on. This is uh, going to be an interesting little video, I hope. Um, from about 1949 to about 1952, Land Rover made a differential called a split nose casing. Casing's here, and if you look at the top, see it's very different from your normal um, casing because it has that little bit there, oh God, that little bit there, uh, which goes on the top of there, um, and has special spacers and special parts and special seal and special bolts and lock tabs. Um, and they stopped doing this around about 1952-ish, um, and they're very rare. Um, and as with this one, they're normally very buggered as well. Um, so we bought a load of diffs in the other day, um, and I was particularly keen to get hold of this and the others that came with it, because the split nose casing, if you've got a series uh, vehicle, series one, and you want absolute originality, then you have to have one of these diffs in there. And with my uh, nice man at Crown Diff, Steve, hiya Steve, I got a list of Series 1 bits and Series 1 special tools. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know anywhere where you can get a split nose casing properly rebuilt with all new genuine parts, so that not only does it look original, but it is original. Down to the uh, point that here, there should be a sort of brass uh, shim and that is missing on most of these, they've fallen away and got thrown away and this has had a load of goo on it. We've actually got brand new brass shims in stock. Um, we're going to rebuild this one to be totally 100% original. Uh, we're going to use the uh, carrier bolts, I'm going to get those aqua blasted. These have got uh, little holes in and these will be rewired. Uh, the crown wheel and pinion has completely had it. The crown the pinion here, I don't know if you can see, has got very heavily marked, nasty marks on it. It's uh, really not very nice at all. Um, the crown wheel equally, although you can't probably see it here, has got very heavy pit pit pitting and chipping. Um, the crown wheel bolts themselves, they are completely different to normal. Uh, these are a British Standard Fine 3 8 fit. Um, and they have uh, locking tabs, which we'll be putting new locking tabs on. Um, this one, uh, we saved it just in time. That's a crack running right across the bearing race. Um, so obviously all the bearings are going to be replaced. We've got very old new stock. Uh, we've stripped the entire centre apart. The gears are in remarkably good condition. Um, there's also a special um, fibre pad here which goes in there for oiling. We've got new ones of those that will go in. Here's the uh, oil seal which has seen better days. Somehow I've got to get that up and clean it up. Uh, casing itself is going to be sent off for aqua blasting and uh, cleaned up. Um, now these are, uh, are, are, are colour painted. We're going to actually get the correct colour paint and we're going to recolour them. Um, and basically we are going to build the hell out of this so that it is one lovely original split casing diff. So to start with, we're going to start with the casing. This is really horrible. It's uh, The oilways are full of dirt. However, these are painted on the insides in a sort of weird pinky reddy sort of colour, which we've got tins of. Uh, we've got the scrap, uh, very expensive large carrier bearings in there. Um, I'll show you more about that in the video. But when these were built, they were very much built in uh, sort of 1940s, 50s style of let's make them good and proper. So the bearings in here, they are all significantly bigger than the current uh, Land Rover offering. So we're going to send this off, we're going to get it all cleaned up and we'll have a look at it when it comes back. But in the meantime I've turned my attention to the centre. Um, rather than just say, ooh, isn't everything clean, I'm actually going to show you uh, something that I think is sadly really quite interesting. But then again, the more diffs I do, the sadder I get. Bear in mind this is sort of circa 1950. This is when the engineers ran companies and not the accountants who penny pinch. 
and it really is a testament to the quality of the engineering that this is in such good condition. So we've given this a bit of a ultrasonic clean and a polish and, and it's come up really nicely and the pin has got no wear in there at all which is quite incredible because they often wear in these things in the later diffs and if I turn it upside down again it's come up really nicely a um, bit more to go and then I've got to do some uh, geeky painting but let's look at the gears first of all here is a pair of gears from a late uh, TD5 diff this is the drive gear 24 spline very nice thank you and this is the planet gear or sun gear as some people call it um, now these normally wear here and they have thrust washes and all sorts of things to take the wear um, but this is done to a price pure and simple as is this done to a price um, because as you can see here on the back you get wear you see the shiny bits this hasn't done many miles at all actually and it's not in the greatest of health and here we have a 1950 gear that I've cleaned up and you'll notice there's three little holes ten spline in the centre three little holes and turn it over and those three little holes come out inside the gears guess what that's for lubrication isn't that nice and if I look at the planet gear of a normal gear these normally will waggle around on the shaft because they're worn uh, here we have 1950s technology a little hole a little hole and the hole comes through the inside for oiling on the shaft and that's why I mean look at the condition of the back oh, I'm getting sad now and there's these little cutouts here and that's for oil as well the oil sits there and wipes as it goes round and you've got to admit that's pretty damn clever however it gets better than that because on the back of these drive gears the three holes are here so the oil can be pushed through by the gears meshing and as the oil pushes through it goes onto this thrust pad which has numerous holes on it and what that does is it rotates and as it rotates it washes the back face of in there with oil and you have to take your hats off to these people because they knew what they were doing when they built this this is brilliant engineering and sadly you know for the sake of a few quid they don't cross drill uh, the gears they don't put oil rotator thrusts on there um, they just put cheap gears and some thrust pads on there casing is now back from the cleaners uh, this has been professionally cleaned we've left the bearing races in as we always do to protect the diff case itself but because this is going to be rebuilt and totally original we've taken the unusual step of also having all the parts that are going back in it which are original uh, aqua blasted so this literally does look like new um, aqua blasting is very expensive very slow process but very gentle uh, this was the the nose that we've had redone which again looks like new and then here we've got the special bolts that actually hold this nose front on they've all been aqua blasted and we've had the same done to the special carrier caps which have the lock wire that's going to run through them and then these uh, bolts which are for the crown wheel are not your normal thread um, these are a much more uh, old imperial thread and they've also got a little shank on them which is quite important so we've had those done as well the casing itself um, that's come up really really well considering it's 1949 um, it's going to need some cleaning and it's going to need some painting uh, particularly on the inside because it's taken off all the original paint we've managed to find the correct color for it and this is all going to be sprayed up inside and the same with the carrier caps they've all come up nice and clean um, but we're moving forwards now and putting back together rather than taking bits apart so the next thing is to get the casing painted up original with the new bearings pressed in some amount of work later we have the center which we've repainted uh, in the correct colors um, it's all been stripped and cleaned uh, we've got the correct, correct shim packs in there and we've uh, put all the gears back in and they are absolutely beautiful uh, so the center is pretty much done now I'll show you the other side because that was a bit trickier to get to look dead right so again it's it's exactly as it would have been when it was first built uh, the painting basically uh, not covering the holes uh, and not covering the race because that will affect how the bearing would sit on there but there we go uh, real anoraki time um, this is held in with a solid pin on one side and then 
if I just turn it around, a special little split pin on the other, which this bit has to be locked in uh, correctly, otherwise the crown wheel won't go over. So that's a bit of a pain to do. Very, very pleased with that. That's come up really nicely. Um, we've had it aqua blasted and, and keyed it so that the paint really will stick to it. And uh, I think that looks rather, 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 rather posh, really. Isn't it? With the inside all colour coded, uh, the races can now come out. We've finished painting the outside. Um, there's the series uh, filler plug. You can just see the painted inside from there. And uh, that's come up particularly well. Uh, very pleased with that. If I start pricing up my time on this, I think this is going to be a labour of love and a lost leader. But it's starting to look very nice. So now it's a matter of uh, putting it together. We're going to be using a brand new crown wheel and pinion, which is very old new stock, uh, genuine Land Rover uh, from our selection that we bought in, and putting it all back together with uh, either original parts or new parts. New parts will mainly be the bearings, um, and the old parts will be obviously the centre, the gears, um, and the original bolts and the lock wiring will be redone as well. Over here we have the refurbished, repainted, uh, very cleaned up um, casing. Next to it we have the refurbished centre with uh, new oil thrusts and all the gears cleaned up and repainted as well. Over here we have very old, very new stock, uh, genuine Land Rover 4.7 crown wheel and pinion. Uh, that's going to be doing the lock wire uh, because all the bolts as you can see here, these are lock wired together along with the retainers. Uh, those little bolts there are for the uh, split nose. And then we've got some extremely old new stock come out of a packet dated 1949, new lock tabs for the little bolts there. Uh, we have aqua blasted imperial adjuster rings, and then we've got the shim pack and gasket for the front of the nose. The locking tabs are all genuine old new stock for. Um, locking in the uh, crown wheel bolts and those are all the 1948 stroke 9 crown wheel bolts again all aqua blasted. Now if you look at a Timkin box nowadays it doesn't look anything like that and they don't come wrapped up in a lovely uh, paper with printed names on. This is from an age um, as is that bearing there. Uh, we couldn't get a Timkin one of those we could only got an SKF one of those but that's that's good enough and then over here for the head bearing, uh, this is brilliant, uh, this is really old. For those of you old enough to remember, that's a Leyland sign. That's brand new, genuine Land Rover stroke Leyland, and a new, genuine seal. Uh, at the back there are the carrier caps, they've all been cleaned up and painted, and probably a few bits I've forgotten. Yep, right there, there's the nose, uh, aqua blasted, polished, and then repainted to be as it should. So all we've got to do now, is put this joyous bundle of fun together. Sitting on our press is one of the early um, force blind um, dry flanges and then we've got to put the uh, very expensive very big bearings onto the uh, carrier itself. And now we're pressing on the very early very large um, quality uh, bearings which are horrendously expensive. Uh, they're about three times the size of a normal um, RTC 3095 because this being old has properly big bearings in it. So that's one side. One of the problems we found is that this bearing, although it's huge, the carrier is actually inside it. So although we've got one bearing on, we can't just uh, put it on the, on the base here because it would crush the cage. So we've got to make a little tool up to hold it off the table. And then we're going, and here we go, putting the, uh, putting the top bearing on. There we go. Lovely when you've got a nice big press, it makes life so much easier and it's better on the bearings than shock loading them with hammers and things. So we've got a nice little building tool that we use to, uh, to suspend them in mid-air and it also makes it easier to build. So now we're going to put the uh, new crown wheel on. Now these uh, can be um, sometimes lock wired. Uh, these ones are actually tabbed. So we've got new genuine old tabs down here. And we've also got the original bolts which have been aqua blasted and frankly they look like new. Crown wheels on with all the new tabs. These are normally uh, being folded on and off so many times they'll split. But the idea of these is they actually hold the bolts in place because they're very low grade 
and you can't really torque them up very tight. So these have all been torqued up and we're now ready to uh, make a mess folding the tabs over. They're not the nicest things in the world to work with. Um, you've got to beat them so they do actually touch the bolt and then you can fold them over. But they're all on. Now we're pressing on the new very expensive head bearing. Nice tight fit. Now being that this is a early series, this is completely different in terms of the height blocks that we can use to anything else. So courtesy of uh, Steve from Crown Diffs, who's very generously sold me all his kit, we have a very nice uh, special height block unit which we've set up and it's absolutely spot on for the pinion height now, um, so we can move on to actually building. Uh, this will only fit these sort of casings and nothing else. Lucky we had it. And now we're going to put the head bearing in, there we go. You'll hear the note change when it hits the chin. And then the pressure pressure shows it's going up. Then we lift the piston out of the way and we can take the special tool out that is shaped for that particular race and job done. No hammers involved and there's a new, nice new shiny expensive head bearing. Seeing that this is the uh, split casing uh, we're sort of missing the bit we normally push in so we've got the special tool to fit the special tail bearing and that's going to be pressed in um, so it's absolutely flush so we're all lined up and away we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Superb. And then we release it and that's the tail bearing in place. And there we go. Tail bearing all pressed in. And setting the pinion preload up is a whole different game on one of these because you've got no nose on it. So you've got to be very careful what you're doing to make sure it all lines up and you're done. Got a new dust shield on there, original spacer and a new 4 volt flange. We'll be putting a castellated nut and a felt seal. So we've got the new uh, brass gasket in there, shim, whatever you want to call it. We've got it all uh, bolted up. We've got new locking tabs. Uh, out of a packet date stamp 1949, front pinion's all now done and it's uh, back to the centre. We also have the added problem there's no bottom flat on these casings so they're very difficult to grip so we've improvised and uh, pinions all in place with the uh, special head. Quite a small pinion 4.7 gear but there we go it's looking very nice so we'll now start putting the centre together. And then we've got more parts aquablasted we've got the uh, the little ears with the little holes in here, that's for the lock wire to go through. Uh, we've got the aqua cleaned um, bolts, which you've got to have the wires going through, and obviously the imperial adjuster rings, which are of different size to all the other ones on Land Rovers. I'm now showing you that the bearings on these early diffs are actually much bigger, uh, much stronger. Uh, it's a lot thicker race, it's a bigger bearing, it's just generally a bigger unit, um, which shows the, the quality of what went into these. So we've now got the centre in place with the carrier cap rings, we've got the carrier caps to go on in a minute with the original bolts, but it's now beginning to look much more like a diff and uh, so ourselves a very nice one as well. There's an old saying sometimes that when you're tightening a boat up, you know, gives you the willies. Uh, this, this takes it to a whole new level, calling it the willies. How sad is that? It's a willies bolt. It's been a right little piglet. We've uh, sorted out the, um, the dial gauge so we can measure the backlash. Now it's all built up. It's registering on zero. And we've got a lovely six thou backlash. And we'll check it in some other from the opposite side. Six and a half thou. So there's half a thou run out. Uh, we'll check the others. And we've got an acceptable blue check on the drive side and on the coast side. So with the uh, run out, we're happy with the backlash. Uh, so we've got six thou uh, backlash and half a thou run out all the way around, which is brilliant. So now we've got to uh, wire up uh, the bolts and the ears 
to finish. A bit more. One more to match the other side. That will do nicely. Release that, and then we've got to feed it through the bowl and continue. And then when we've finished the lock wiring, we poke it back up inside the little area so it looks all neat. I don't think there's any way you'd ever get the lock wire as neat as that without a special tool to do it. Um, and it does take a bit of practice, but the results really do look lovely. Very time consuming, so I understand now why this isn't done anymore apart from racing cars. But the reason also is the bolts are so poor quality that they didn't dare leave them uh, what they thought was tight because they come undone. Um, bolt technology's moved on now, so you can buy bolts that you can do up really, really tight and there's no need for lock wire. But on the other hand, it is a belt and braces and it's nice to see. And uh, even though I had to buy a special tool to do it, I don't want to work out how much this diff has cost me. I must be out of my mind. So from nasty, rusty, solidly jammed up, broken heap of a split nose that arrived. Um, I don't want to work out the number of hours on this. Um, it is going to go on the website. It is going to be hideously expensive, um, partly because of the cost of the bearings and also the amount of labour that's gone into this. Um, but if someone wants to give me an exchange unit, then it will be a fraction of the price because I do have trouble finding these in any condition. But if you've got a series vehicle and you want it to be rebuilt, all original and correct, then we can do it. And here's the first one we've ever done. Quite chuffed with that. Interesting that you can actually see the size of the carrier bearings when they're zoomed in on. They're absolutely huge. And this was really um, built up to a specification in the 50s. Um, and the accountants hadn't got hold of companies and cost cut. You can see the, the quality that's gone into the design of this and then when you look at the later diffs how much uh, they've been made cheaper. Simple as that. So final part of this video now. Uh, we found a brand spanking new uh, filler plug. Uh, that's again very 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 old new stock. Um, all the front end is uh, completely original with new parts, uh, all the lock tabs and bolts, casing has been cleaned, it's got all new bearings, it's been aquaplasted and repainted and uh, I don't even think I want to work out how much time and money I've spent on this but I'm really pleased with it and if it doesn't sell I don't care because it will look lovely on display at the next Donington show. But. Um, <coughs> There you go, one completely original early 4.7 series diff, rebuilt to be as original as we can, even though we've used some very new, very old stock. Um, but overall, I'm chuffed a bits with this, and I don't know who the new owner's going to be, but I really hope they look after it. Been fun doing it. I like old ball stuff now and again. Bye for now. Well, wasn't that frightfully exciting? Incidentally, my name is Simon James, and you can find my details at www.voiceovers.co.uk forward slash simon.james. I do voices such as this and many other styles for proper professional companies in the form of TV and radio commercials, corporate narrations, animations, e-learning modules, on-hold messages, and even, sadly, for people like this idiot Barker who hunted me down and persuaded me to do the introduction and credits for this video. Jolly good fun there, wasn't it?